it's Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. What's the future health? I'm talking to the who's who of health tech and healthcare innovation here at the Digital Health Studio. And joining me right now, I have N.T. Chern. He is the head of information technology in health informatics at the Hong Kong Hospital Authority. N.T., it's great to have you here. No, it's great to be here. All right, explain first what the Hong Kong Hospital Authority is for those who may not be familiar with sure. it, because it's pretty impressive. Well, uh, we are the, uh, the largest healthcare provider in Hong Kong. Uh, we're formed by an amal amalgamation of all the public healthcare uh, hospitals and clinics into one organization. So that's 43 hospitals, 160 something clinics, and under one corporate roof and under one IT department. That's you. All right, That's so me. let's yeah. talk about some of the health IT changes that have been happening over time, because you've been in this space for quite a while. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're responsible for pretty much building out the IT infrastructure there. So tell me, you know, what has changed in the time that you have been in this space? I mean, especially now, you know, post-COVID, increased digitalization of everything. I mean, what do you think is the biggest change? So you want me to summarize 30 years? Yes. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. So The key takeaway yeah, from no. 30 years. <laughs> look, look, it's, of course, it's changed amazingly. So when, when I started there, and this was early 1990s, uh, we were what, what we call a greenfield site, right? There was very little IT in place and virtually nothing at the ward or the clinic, right? So, so the clinicians did, did not interact with any sort of IT. And so, you know, they, many of them had never used a mouse. They didn't oh, know wow. what this, this thing was. So, we, you know, we had a lot of um, things we had to overcome uh, from that point of view. But we were, we were able to start small and demonstrate success in how this, how this technology could help them deliver care. And really, the focus for me was always on how can we improve care, how can we improve clinical workflow, make the lives of our patients and our clinicians better. And you know, even back then when everything was very primitive, that was the goal. And we've gradually been able to deliver more and more along those lines. So, so now, of course, everybody's very familiar with technology. Um, and it, people actually want more stuff to support them day to day. The mouse is now the bane of their existence. Well, right? yes. So, so but but they, they really do. They they can see where the technology is helping them. Um, so what, one thing I'm very happy with, very proud of, is that the clinicians in Hong Kong see the IT as something that helps them, not as something that's like forced on them to do administrative overhead type stuff. So so it's you know, we, so, and, and that's just through concerted long term long term focus on, you know improving clinical. Um, and now we're, we're moving beyond just that to improving the overall experience of both patients and clinicians, and also in how we can transform the whole delivery of healthcare with new service models, new ways of working, all empowered through uh, digital technology. All right, great. Let's pick your brain on some of that. Okay. I'd be curious about some of your advice, even just how to think about that, because mm. I think that's where a lot of people who are in your role in other health systems and other parts of the world, it's like the challenge is, you know, how do you embrace the, the current collection of technology and put it in place to improve the experience of care for right. both the clinician and the patient? So, what, how are you thinking about this? Like, what are yeah. some of the questions that you're asking as you're thinking about, you know, maybe you're looking at some of this tech that's coming across your desk and proposals. Like, what are you asking yourself? Like, how are you designing the strategy? Another simple question. Okay. <laughs> Look. You, you didn't expect this to be easy, <laughs> did you? <laughs> so, um, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm very, because um, I've been doing this for 30 years, yeah. right? It's, it's, not a, it's not a project, it's, it's like a life. It's a passion. It's a passion, <laughs> and, and I always think about what am I actually doing, am I doing the right thing? I mean, you know, I'm talking about fairly fundamental things here, so I mentioned those things, um, you know, improving quality of care, and now looking more directly at experience of care and care delivery. Uh, the other thing was the, the um, provision of high quality data that supports those goals. And of course nowadays data supports you know, all the great AI possibilities. Now of course when we started, nobody knew about that. Right. We didn't know about that, no. right? But luckily it lined up, because the, the focus on, on the medical record as a source of care now transitions directly into, into, a, into a source of innovation and new possibilities with AI. Um, and the key there is that we all, we'd always done it in a way that it was as structured as possible, as standardized as possible, while still respecting the need to enhance workflow. Now, I, I, I do believe that those things still apply. Yeah. Those sort of fundamental principles still apply. But one of the things that I've found now is that we built a lot of the underlying structures, right? A lot of that tech, the interoperability and all that, the workflow support, all those things, the nice usable UIs, all those things. Um, but now I'm thinking about, okay, what we want to make um, a more transformative difference, right? So we've sort of been improving it, you know, you'd say at the edges or just 
greasing the wheels a bit, but that's not really the, the full impact of what, what, what we need to do. And so we're talking about new service models, you know, cutting out just major parts of, of non-value add stuff, okay. which still happens, right? Could you give me an example? Like what kind of, like give me a new service well, model. Like is this like well, a telehealth kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. the obvious one, of All course, right, telehealth, yeah. telehealth, yeah. So, I mean, you know, telehealth, there is a technology, technological component, of course. And so we had put that in place before COVID, but nobody really wanted it before no, COVID. No, right. Yeah. So, so now it's there, but um, to be honest, the, 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 just putting that technology in, and we integrated as much as we could with our existing uh, EMR workflow and, and with the patient, um, you know, with our single uh, digital front door for patients. So we've done that, but it still was, it's still lacking something because it's still a an extra layer of friction. Mm. Um, because, you know, when you're doing a normal consultation, the patient comes in, the doctor, he's interacting with our record, but he's looking at the patient and he's just doing that thing, right? Now with the telehealth, it's just another thing they have to deal right, with. Right. Yeah, and and so just digitizing that experience is not is not solving my 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 main principle, which is to, it must make it better. Right. It doesn't actually make it better. It makes it better for the patient. It's true, but everybody has to get benefit. You yes. see, for us. So so we're at the moment reimagining that the whole approach to tele and saying. Um, so, you know, in a sense, I could say that what we did, what we'd done was put in technology to more or less replicate what was in place before. And that's something that we do talk about a lot in digital. Don't yes. just replicate. Right. But sometimes you just have to to get started, right? Yeah. So in that, in that one for sure, we're, we're, going, we're, we're, re, we're revisiting that uh, whole thing and saying, how can we reimagine the thing? What do we need to develop more on top of what we have to make it just smoother and better for everybody, especially the doctors who are sitting there seeing the patients. All right, I, I don't think you're alone in that in, in that point. I feel like there's a lot of other hospital executives that are out there that are doing that, just that. I'm curious to ask, and this is a trend I've noticed in the US, is that the number of people who are involved in IT decision making now at the executive level has expanded oh. tremendously. Is that the case in your in, in Hong Kong as well? Uh, look, that's been my goal. <laughs> that's been your goal, It's that's been right. my goal. No, I mean, because I mean, I've been in a privileged position to sort of more or less shape this digital infrastructure and, and the application of digital health through, you know, this, this uh, the whole of the hospital authority. Right. And, and we've also reached out now to the whole of Hong Kong. But, you know, there's only, I can only go so far. You can, I can build a better mousetrap. Right. But, or, you know, to bring the, the horse to water, you know, that, all yes, these, yeah, all these yeah, metaphors, yeah, all right? All these metaphors, yes. But, but I can't force the horse to drink. Um, and so what, what, we're really, what we've been working on is uh, creating the sort of like, um, you know, governance and, and um, the right places and the right levers to make everybody aware that this is the, they need to do this stuff to help them achieve their goals. Um, now, one of the big successes I had uh, earlier on was engaging our board. Now, our board has a lot of non-medical people. Yeah. And so they're looking at it from, you know, maybe from their banking background or retail background, whatever it is, and going, hang on, you guys, you know, they, they, don't, they didn't see it as much because a lot of the clinical stuff was still happening. It felt like the same as it used to be. Yeah. It had a lot of IT underneath it, mm -hmm. but it wasn't that obvious to them. And, you know, it's stuff like people are still standing in queues. Why is that? Because that's not a clinical thing, actually. Right. That's an experience thing. So, so getting them on board and saying, look, we can make this better, um, it, but it sits on top of all the other stuff we've done. But to make that better, we have to now engage the people who are running those services, um, you know, from the top down. Yeah. The people who are delivering those services, like, you know, at, at, the, at the counter, all that sort of stuff. Um, and how do they engage the patients to get them to use this stuff? So it becomes a concerted effort from the, throughout the whole organization. And that's, you know, we're, we're not all the way there yet, yeah. but the conversation has moved a lot so that uh, it's, it's no longer it's just us trying, trying to, you know, be the cheerleader yeah. and all that stuff, yeah. Do you have any tips for that? Because I, it's Whoa. funny you mentioned that because like there was, um, I was with a, gr a group of hospital executives who were focused on that and it was like the number of, of folks I interviewed at, at this particular place trying to implement just IT to, you know, for customer experience, it ranged from, and you know, the head of information technology and informatics like yourself, to the chief customer officer, mm -hmm. or the chief patient officer, or the chief nursing officer. I mean, the, 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 the backgrounds of the folks who are trying to implement it is, is so diverse. From the, from the IT informatics perspective, you know, what's one thing that you could offer in terms of advice to others in IT or informatics backgrounds who are trying to build that, 
you know, that group, that working group to really look at the whole, the sum total of the patient experience or the provider experience yeah. to help inf infuse technology into it in a good way? Well, um, one thing that really helped was I report directly to the CEO. Oh, that does help. That does help, right? <laughs> and that means I can, I have direct access to the board as well. So that does help, but you know, if, even if you're not at that level, I think one of the main things we've always been, I've always been, you know, even before where I am now, I was just, uh, just constantly advocating. You know, just putting myself out there and saying, look, hey, we can help with that one, we can help with this thing. And really, really rushing out there to engage with people who were trying to solve their problems and offering, you know, an alternative way which was in line with what we were trying to build. And this is a key point, because um, this is a, this was, we were, I'm, I was in there for the long haul, right? Yeah, and still one, are. Well, and I still am. <laughs> and one of the main issues I had was, because you know, we're doing a lot of development, and I have a lot of you know, um, informatics people who are, and, and I need to sustain this, who knows for how long, maybe forever, right? So how do I build a sustainable thing where I can, the, the technology is sustainable, our relationships are sustainable, and we're also delivering all of these projects at the same mm -hmm. time. So that does mean that we have to, um, even as we're helping people out, we need to help them out in a way that also helps us out. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if that's coming across. Yeah, no, yeah. it is. It yeah. is absolutely. Because you could, I could pursue everything and just, you know, work just, really yeah, hard here and there and that. But then at some point that would just collapse, right? Right. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be sustainable. And you wouldn't get the buy-in from, from the people who really need to do this and, yeah. and the, the direct reports that, you know, cascade into different and, measures. And you know, the beauty about health is that ultimately health is a very integrated thing because, you know, a patient is, He's seeing all these different people, but it's still one person, right? Right. So, so you have to make sure that whatever you deliver does manage to integrate at the patient, and then roll up to the service level. And so that's these are sort of like, I mean, you know, principles of how we build everything, yeah. and to make sure that it's always executed along those lines, no matter what who we're supporting. All right. I don't know very much about the Hong Kong health IT infrastructure system, so I'm mm -hmm. hoping you can help me out here. What's it like from a data sharing standpoint? I mean, this is something that I feel like every country I've ever gone to, there's always conversation about how we share patient records and what's the best way to do that, yeah. and, and then the, the benefits thereof if we can. What's it like in Hong Kong? And like, give us give us a, a little bit of a, a glimpse at what what's happening there. So, um, like I said, I've always said that the patient record is is the gold. Mm -hmm. I've always said that. Um, and now, even early on when we were, you know, using really primitive technology back in the 90s, um, when you actually could not build a, uh, a, a hospital authority-wide database, you just couldn't do it. The technology wasn't wasn't powerful enough. We were building we were building with a view that this is where we need to get to. So standardization of the structures, having a single build, even though you're doing multiple instances, yep. it's the, the data structure is exactly the same. So that when we got to the stage at some point where the technology got good enough we're able to just put it together and then have that have that single integrated record, all the data is structured, standardized, and it can then start feeding through to all the all the administrative, all the management needs. So I had I've been saying one this this catchphrase for the last 20 something years <laughs> is is management data must be a byproduct of clinical process. Okay. So it's always about clinical process, clinical care, all the other stuff that we provide up you know, upstream just has to flow out of that. Okay. Yeah. So you guys have all of the the, 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 the record and nirvana that we are all, oh, no? Well, <laughs> okay, so so the, now this was happening within the hospital authority, yeah. which is the largest healthcare provider in Hong Kong, but it's not the whole picture, right? Okay. So we do have private hospitals, we have uh, private, uh, a lot of primary care in the private sector, okay. primary and, uh, and specialist care. So uh, back in about, uh, let's say, 09 or so, um, the, the ministry, the health ministry, so we're not, we're, we're quasi-government, right? Okay. So the health ministry is separate, and they said to us, hey, look, we, we think we need to sort of join up everybody now, all the, all the other uh, parts of the healthcare sector. And so they basically tapped us, hey, look, you've been doing this within the hospital authority, um, can we just make it happen outside as well? Now, <laughs> so we're looking at it and going, yeah, sure, technically it seems, doesn't seem that hard. Now, the challenge there is certainly not technical, so we're able to take basically what we had, you know, enhance it a bit here and there. Um, some, some of it was simplifying some parts of it and do a new build which was supporting health record sharing at the same sort of granular structured level, standardized level across the whole of Hong Kong. And we had the big advantage of having the hospital authority records already digitized for quite a while by then. So we were able to pump, pump the, our records into that shared infrastructure. Uh, but that infrastructure became available to patients uh, who were seeing different providers 
in other parts of the healthcare ecosystem and you know, all the security and privacy right. settings that had to be developed for that setting. So, so that we built and went live in that uh, in 2016. Wow, okay. And so now we have these two massive in infrastructures of sharing. Um, the, 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 the main difference is though, the, 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 the private one is, is very much an opt-in system. We're not forcing anybody. Okay. Yeah, because you know, that's, that's kind of difficult for us. So, so we're still in this process of how do we really drive the, um, the private sector to fully engage in that system. And, then, and now we're getting to the stage where um, our, our, our healthcare system is being, being designed with a much more integrated view that we're trying to really get everybody to, to contribute on this integrated way, drive goals like improved primary care, a lot more shared care, maybe more uh, protocols and care plans that traverse these boundaries, and to do it all on this digital infrastructure that's wow. already in place. Very cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, good. Wow, okay. All right, NT, I have one last question for you. Sure. You have been in this health IT infrastructure conversation for 30 years, from Greenfield to now like the era of the health data gold mine. <laughs> How has the conversation changed the most? I mean, it, 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 what has changed in terms of you know, what people are talking about when they think about technology and healthcare? There's so many ways. <laughs> oh, tell me, give me a list. We can go well, right down. <laughs> well, first of all, there's uh, almost everybody's able to at least talk about it now. They're aware this is something that needs to be done. So, for instance, nowadays, if someone wants to propose a new healthcare initiative, um, at least within the, the hospital authority itself, because we have a very integrated planning purpose, uh, uh, integrated planning process, where everybody sits at the table to discuss all the new things we want to do, and you know, uh, if it's clinical stuff, you know, IT's in there somewhere. Okay. You know, and so my my, my uh, preference is that we've already built enough that we can just, I can support that thing out of the box. Sometimes not, sometimes we have to do some enhancements and some extra build stuff. But, but at least everybody's aware that the best way to do it usually is with some, some infusion of digital along the way, right? So there used to be they would just say, oh yeah, we need this thing, let's hire some more doctors, hire some more nurses. But you know what? <laughs> Nobody can do that anymore. It's right. not possible anymore, right? right? And so, so now being people reimagining what they want to achieve with more digital support and use these tools a lot more, a lot better. And that also goes down to engaging with the patients through the, through the, you know, the single patient app that we build as well. That's fantastic, yeah. NT. Well, thank you so much for letting me pick your brain and letting me learn a little bit about what's going oh, on in Hong Kong. It. No, it's very interesting. I love learning about different health systems because we all have different constraints, but we all have different opportunities. And so I feel like there's so much to be shared by hearing from somebody like yourself. So thank you so much for joining me. Not at all. Me. I appreciate it. All right, everybody, you can find more interviews with the people who are changing the way that we do healthcare over on my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash WTF Health. I'm Justin Massa. Thanks so much for joining us. Bye.